Hey, this is Man Made Mead. I'm here with my two friends, Tony and Chris. We are here to do the Mead Tournament of 2020. If you are familiar with the channel, back in 2018, I actually uh, did a Mead Tournament with my first 16 meads. I have a, over about 70 different recipes now, and so I picked 16 of my own to face together for this 2020 tournament. You can see the board here. We have everything um, facing against each other. We have three glasses per person, so we're not having to share. But uh, what's going to happen here is each one's going to battle and we'll battle. We'll, we'll taste test them and we'll decide based solely on a couple things. Mainly the the um, we're mainly choosing which one we like more. Um, not necessarily diving into all of the uh, extra things about um, these meats. In the future, you're going to see a video where we actually taste test every one of them and we rank them on a bunch of different characteristics and uh, just a different scoring. Um, sheet. So you'll see that in the future. So uh, look out for that. But we are going to be doing this. It's really simple. Uh, we're going to go two at a time. We have um, a little coin, which is a red side and a green side. I will be putting like a red piece of paper, green piece of paper on each one. We'll taste them, kind of talk about it a little bit, decide which one we like um, more of the two, or well, I'll say we'll make a choice in our brain and then we'll actually use the coin to decide which goes on. There are three of us because we don't want to have any ties or anything like that. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm excited for this. I think they're excited for this, hopefully. Yeah, we just yeah. got through taste testing all of these um, and we don't know any what they are exactly. So I made this blind and they don't really know exactly what they are. I have, I'm more familiar because they are my meads, so I have some familiarity to what they are, but uh, you will know what they are on the screen. We are kind of just trying to figure that out. So let's get started. We're going to start in the back left corner over here. And um, yeah, let's do it. So let's start with the first two. And I'll let them grab their glasses too. There are three judges here. And if you want to see any behind the scenes of um, how I have organized this, uh, you, I'll be posting a video about that, how I've basically made it to where there's this is all working so uh, let's start guys with um, number six this is number six versus number eleven and again we don't know what they are if you were curious um, you will know I got the wrong ones you got oh, six, six and eleven I have I have six and eleven Yep, six and eleven. Oh, 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 yep. oh, 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 oh. Start with number six. All right, um, we're gonna taste test it. We'll talk a little bit about what we like about it, maybe, and, and um, maybe workshop some ideas of what it will be, and then we'll go on. So let's go ahead and taste test. It. This one has some um, some carbonation, which is definitely helpful. Um, it's definitely sweet. I don't think it's too sweet. It, it's balanced out. Like mm -hmm. all the notes are there. Um, Slightly floral. Yep. So I, again, I, I'm very comfortable with a lot of these because I've taste tested them over time. I know what this one is. What do you guys think it is? This is number six, by the way, if you're looking mm, at it. I, I want to say it's some kind of boche. Okay. I don't remember what I said earlier. We have our list here, too. <laughs> so you so, can, you, uh, we can reference to that. <clears throat> mm, oh, actually, it could be the... Mixed berry, mixed berry, because it's carbonated. I think I, I think I said raspberry. You think you said raspberry last time, but I don't remember. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna go with raspberry. Okay, you think it's raspberry? Mm -hmm. What do you think, Chris? Uh, I'm gonna stick with the boche. Okay. <laughs> um, so that's uh, number six. We're gonna put that on the red. So that is what we'll choose from in a second. Let's try number eleven now. This has some um, caramel notes to it. It has some spice to it. And uh, it it is, uh, I, I feel like, I, I know what it is. And that's what's hard for me. It's like, I don't want to just give it away. I'm curious what you guys have to think. So, before I start talking. Well, so, can we use those sheets? What do you mean? The yeah. Sheet, the, no, no, no. What we no, no, no. Let's like, go off of, go off of. Because. I know. <laughs> it's easier when you're able to like go through it and analyze it. I think this one's the... Basic boche. Okay. Yeah, it's a, this is a boche. I'll tell you that. It is a boche. Um, 
It's either that or the apple and cinnamon. I think it's <coughs> basic. Or sorry, the apple pie. Okay. I, I think it's one of those two. Yeah, I, I had it in my head that it was the apple and cinnamon meat. Yeah. <coughs> so you think... Um, okay, well, um, this is a boche, I'll tell you that. And uh, I'm pretty confident to say it's the apple pie boche. So it's uh, it's a, got some apple pie flavoring in it. Okay, if you need to take a second, take a second and refresh yourself on both of them. Um, I have my choice about which one I like more, but I'll give you a second if you want. Mm, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I think it's an all green. I, yeah. All right, so the, the, uh, the apple pie boche or meat number 11 um, moves on. Now, if it's not the apple pie boche, then I'm really embarrassed. <laughs> so we're going to move on to, looks like, what's it, number five here? Uh, number three. start now with number five and number three. Let's start with number five, guys. Um, here we go. This, okay, whenever we were taste testing a little bit ago, this is what, um, there's another one that tastes very similar to this, and I think I definitely, uh, you know, got this one wrong. I think, but I think I know what it is now. It's a little sweet. Um, mm -hmm. It kind of has this a thing I didn't notice before with this is that it kind of has this like cola thing. Oh yeah, like mm -hmm. not like Coca Cola, but like the the actual bean or whatever it is. Yeah, um, the, like a, the nut. The nut. Cola it's nut. a cola nut. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you think it is? If you had to make a choice, I I I think it's white chocolate cherry. Okay. Chris, what do you think? I, I had to narrow it down between the white chocolate cherry and the chocolate and vanilla doshe. Okay. Yeah, so I did the same thing when I when I was doing it earlier, but um, the chocolate and vanilla, when I actually tasted the chocolate and vanilla, it was like it was, very different. Yeah. It yeah. Was much more distinct. <laughs> okay. Even though I was blind, like I wasn't <laughs> sure. I right. think that's what it is. I think <laughs> this. Yeah. I think this one's the raspberry doshe. That's my is guess. It? That's my guess. But I just get a little more fruity notes. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, and that was what I was struggling with. Maybe. Maybe it is. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. At the same time. Okay, let's go to the number eleven. Yeah, Keep that one in your head. Three. So, wait, sorry. Oh, I'm looking at my judging. Uh, uh, number three. This is no Mead number three. Yeah, it's either the the orange blossom or the clover. It's, it's the orange blossom one. traditional. Well, I won't say anything. Until we get there. <laughs> I, I really like them. I think I get spice. That's why that's why I'm going with clover traditional. That makes the most sense. <clears throat> yeah. But I don't want my opinion to skew with I think you. this is I I think this is orange blossom. Yeah, because this is a I haven't tasted that one in a long time though, so I could be wrong. It's not seems like it's a traditional, it does not have any fruit. It has mm -hmm. floral with no fruit. Okay, there we go. Let's make a choice. I'm gonna move yours up there. Let's do that. Here is your number. Yeah. All right, and make a choice. Oh, I'm the tiebreaker here. Yeah. Dang. Oh. Hold on. It's a tough one. Yeah, I'm having no. a hard time. I'm having a hard time with that. Yeah, the boche is good. It's just, it's a little too sweet. I it's, think I put a little too much honey into I it. I just think that the number three is better constructed. Yeah. It's, it's I think balanced. it's harder too. If it is one of those traditionals, it is at least two years old. So it's had a lot of time to build. Yeah. It is, it is very smooth. All right. So number three moves on in the bracket. Let's move on to number 13 and number 14. All right, we got number 14 versus number 13. Um, we're in the, of course, quarterfinals, so this is probably the biggest round of all because we're facing all 16. 
we're gonna break down to eight very soon. So um, let's start with number 14. How about that? This one I like a lot. This one's very, um, to me, very wine-esque. More wine-esque than it is like meat-esque because there's not as much honey. I didn't like this one. It, it's it's <laughs> cherry. Yeah, I thought it was the cherry. It's the cherry mead. I thought it was thin and kind of lacking. It was actually the lowest so, score. So I think this is the white chocolate cherry, though. If you taste on it, there's a little bit, um, a little chemical-y taste to it, I think. And that's partially that's the, I think the, I, I, the white chocolate. The white <laughs> chocolate was, I used like an extract. In oh. Kind of, so yeah, I, I, I think I tried, I think I put like medicinal on mm -hmm. the notes. Like it. Yeah. I wouldn't say chemically. I think medicinal probably makes more sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that, I don't know. Um, yeah, I think I called it the cherry, though. It can definitely have the cherry notes. Yeah, it's I just... think I called it the cherry. All right, let's try number 13. This one is uh, very complex to me because it, uh, it has... Well, I'll let them talk first, and then I will... I'll... I don't it's, want to give it away. It's sweeter, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, richer, fuller bodied. I think that's chocolate and vanilla boche. Mm -hmm. I'm getting. <clears throat> that's what makes it really complex. It's a boche, so it's caramelized honey, good caramel taste, chocolate, and you have vanilla in there. I, I, so it is like a snick. Like is I, that a Snickers? No, what's the one? Milky Way. Milky I put Way. peanut butter as one of the notes on mm -hmm. the on the tasting sheet when we were filling it out earlier. Very very slightly smoky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey. All right, guys. Pick your coin up. Mm. Make a choice. Three, this is two, one. one. I. <laughs> this one's just a little. This needs more time. The chocolate and vanilla boche just needs more time to mellow. mellow. I think I rated that like the highest. Really? I think so. Oh, interesting. I, I think okay. I rated the cherry one the highest. On the wow. I, I rated this lowest. Really? <laughs> I, I, I think so. If I remember what I did right, I mean, we can look back at the sheets, but I'm pretty yeah. sure. <laughs> this, awesome. is, this one got like a almost uh, like a sixty six or sixty seven. It was pretty good, well, to me anyway. <clears throat> All right, so number fourteen moves on. We're gonna move on to number seven versus number twelve. All right, here's number twelve versus number seven. Let's we'll start with number twelve. Here we go. Oh, I like the smell. Very, this one. very floral already. Mm -hmm. I think there's some notes to this one. Um, it's definitely darker, you can see here. And uh, it, it has, it's... Um, it's richer, it's sweeter, mm -hmm. it's more complex. It's kind of full Just of generally butter. speaking. I, I like the, with this one that the sweetness is not detracting from the flavor. No, not at all. Like I feel like sometimes the sweetness in a wine or a mead can like take away from the body, the character of it. Like you just get straight up sweetness, or at least in mead world, because honey overwhelms. Mm. It's just sweet. But yeah, this is still really full tasting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what I called this earlier. What do you think uh, it is? Um, but I think it's. I think it's the mixed. Berry. I think it's the mixed berry. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a little this way, I think. If I'm wrong, then that's, we're all wrong. Yeah, we're all wrong. Yeah. 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 All right, number uh, seven. Sense. I'm not sure what it is. Um, I think coming off that mixed berry threw me off a little bit. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. may, this may be... Uh, this may actually be the raspberry boche. Yeah, this is... It does taste a little bit darker. Or the, or the cherry. Uh, I mean, I'm taking a wild guess here. <laughs> it definitely has some sort of fruit, fruit added to it. Mm -hmm. I think this is the basic boche. Really? I thought this was a, I, more of the raspberry. I've noticed that... I think the raspberry is sweeter. Is it? Maybe it's because I've tasted it more. But I think the... the the basic, the boche has like some elements of, like with especially the honey I use, but also like has some fruity aromas that pop out for some reason. So is this the second basic boche you've made or have you made several? I've made, yeah, multiple. Okay, because I tried the very one. first one you did mm -hmm. and it was, and I think that's because I have that impression in my head mm -hmm. of it being 
way more toasty yeah, yeah, than yeah. this one. And I think that's why I was anticipating and why I was having such a hard time like searching. You've done a better job. If that's what this is, yeah. that, this is better yeah. than the, uh, that initial one. I didn't pull that one out, even though that was, I could have. I only have like one bottle of that left in existence. Oh, okay. So I was like, I'm not going to use that. Um, you know what? Here we go. We're going to say. Uh, that's, tough. that's tough. Yeah. Yeah. It's a pretty easy one for me. All right. Well, it didn't matter what I did, but um, <laughs> I guess I was gonna. I, I was bringing more, the more the towards the basic boche, but you did so well. I, that's why we three. I, I know, but I still really really like um, that. I mean, it's like it's we're, we're it's splitting. just very like, like we're splitting hairs here. Yeah. I just think this is better made. Yeah. I don't know. I also think this thing's a little older than that. That uh, the, the mixed berry is a little younger, but it's still smooth, which is interesting to me. It's still like pretty good tasting. Okay, now number 12, which we think is the mixed berry, moves on. Here is number 16 versus number 9. Um, let's start with number 9. How about that? Well, or what did you start with? 16. 16 yeah. Or start with 16. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, uh... 16. I've tasted this one a lot. I know what it is. Yeah, it's pretty obvious. It's very, very distinct. All right, you gotta say on three. Which one it is? Ready? One, two, three. Pineapple and habanero. habanero. Okay, great. Yeah. We're on the same degree. Yeah, I, I actually um, confused this with one of the other ones initially, because mm. I tasted the other one first, and then I tasted the... Uh, pineapple habanero. Yeah. And I, th I actually think what I called originally pineapple habanero was the apple and cinnamon. Oh, mm. interesting. Mm. I think, I think, I don't, mm. I don't remember what I changed it to, but there was like, the other, one of the other meads was like so spicy yeah. that I just, I had this, I saw, I think I just saw that and like immediately thought, then when I actually tried this, I was like, oh yeah, no, yeah. this is, that's what this is. All right, uh, I like it. It's very, it's not too heavy. Like the habanero is not too in your face. It's definitely a little heat, it's, but it's like it's better now than the last time I, mm -hmm. I tried it. It's definitely it, like, the much ago. Yeah, this is it's... also, I think, my original one I made, not my most recent one. I don't know if you had my most recent one, one, but I made a, a more recent version. Here's number nine. We're gonna try this one. I'm not a fan. I think it's um, this is a clover traditional. Yeah. It doesn't have any floral notes, or it doesn't right. have any fruity notes. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. Mm -hmm. it's good. It's no, it's not medicinal. Yeah. I don't think it's medicinal. You don't think I, it's I actually really enjoyed this one. Really? Yeah. It just, the aftertaste for me is just not, like it's not sweet, which is fine, but it doesn't, it tastes, it just has this weird de short, deformity kind of at the end of it. It's a little bit, <laughs> yeah, the it's tail end. It's a little bit bitter and malformed. It's fine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think... Well, I guess I'll we'll just vote. I think All we're right. all in agreement mm -hmm. on this one. Yeah, we're. I I don't really yes. actually like pepper. Yeah. Like, I think we've talked about this before. Like, I don't really like habanero beers or. Uh huh. Um, I just generally don't. I know this isn't beer, but um, I think that I think you did a lot better job, or this is aged well, or whatever. It maybe that's bringing this along. Next I'm time. hoping that one. I'm gonna keep recreating that one. All right, we're gonna move on now to number eight versus number ten. Here's number eight. This is eight versus number ten. Very pretty. Oh, it is. So I, I, I'm almost 100% certain I know what this is. Oh, yeah. I'm not a big fan of this one. It's too light. The body on this one is very light. It doesn't have a lot of honey character, in my opinion. It's kind of thin. It's very, yeah, it's just, it's very watery. Um, I think it would be well if it were, like, carbonated. You think? Uh -huh. More cider-esque? And maybe a little bit sweeter. Yeah, oh, sweeter for sure. Because this mm -hmm. thing, uh, I think this is, uh, I'll ask you, I, I think this is a fruity mead. I, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm almost 100% sure it's the, the it's pear. The pear, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it is. Because it, it's, uh, pear is such a hard fruit to use in brewing. That's why it I've learned. It a lot. This is very it watery. It is, but it's like, I don't know, I've never been able to get a pear to pop out in a mead. So I don't know if that's just my own problem or what. Mm. It is kind of a thin tasting fruit. It yeah, could, it could also just be like, um, you may also have to use, just from 
I mean, I've never gone through the fermentation process of making something, but maybe in my mind, like when I same. think about maybe like baking or things like that, you may have to use like overly, oh, yeah. way, way, way right to get the sugars to. Yeah. Cover. I use definitely use real fruit on this, which is fine. Um, there are alternatives now you can use to add extra flavor that are like um, not necessarily real. But let's go to number 10 now. I'm not certain what that is. Um, I know I'm not a fan. That's for one. <laughs> not a big fan. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't dislike it. I. I actually kind of enjoy the pear because I think it's, um, like very refreshing. I think yeah. if it had a little bit of carbonation in it, it would yeah, it really help. It's light. It's easy. You you get that thing like super cold and like yeah. it's hot out. I think it'd be really really nice being as light as it is and everything. I. I think this is one of the. I think this might be. Well, I haven't tasted it in a long time, but this might be the orange blossom. I know I guessed that earlier. I don't know what else would be. I've tried the clover before. Uh, the orange blossom that when that I called earlier, I really liked. Yeah. Like a lot. I'm hoping it was good. Tra like, truthfully, um, I hope it was good. But um, I also know that this is unfamiliar to me. So, and it doesn't have, like, these other options are not, you know what I mean? It's, this is sweeter. It's, it's. Definitely not super complex or anything. Um, don't have a whole lot going on, but it is it is enjoyable. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't dislike it by any means. Well, um, let's go. Let's vote. Go. Let's vote. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> I'm. I guess, uh, I guess. Yeah. I'm not pear. a favorite. Like of the two, I think it was better. The pear mead was better at number eight. Um, I will say this: if you're wondering, did we curate these to face each other in a certain way? No. In fact, I had them before we started. They don't know what these are at all, mm -hmm. and so I said, "Hey, mix them around a bunch so that we can face randomly." So I did not purposely curate two of them that I do not enjoy against each other. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Uh, yep. Pair moves on. We're gonna move on to number two and number one. <laughs> Moving on to number two and number one. Let's start with number two first. Oh, I know. Just off the smell what this one is. This is very familiar. It's very uh, juicy. Mm-hmm. I remember this. This one doesn't taste very mead-esque to me. I think if, if it was carbonated, it would be even better. That's the mango? It definitely is the mango. Definitely the mango <laughs> mead. It doesn't have a lot of honey character. That's what it lacks for me. Yeah, I think the the <clears throat> the juice flavor kind of overpowers any yeah. of the honey character. Which, I mean, what are you gonna do? It is very sweet though. Yes, yeah. this was not using real mango. I made a mango meat before using puree. It was not very good. I used like a <laughs> um, a uh, whatever it is alternative, you know, like flavoring. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do number three. Nope, number one now. Sorry. I have yours. You have mine. Number one. So this was, I actually really, really like this one. Um, mm. I, I think I guessed wrong. I think I told you guys wrong earlier. Hmm? You guys said that this was the cherry, the one before was the cherry mead, and I said it was the white chocolate. I think this is the white chocolate. The other one was just the cherry. Mm. And I was picking up notes of white chocolate. Mm -hmm. This is, there. it's more distinct than this one. And, mm -hmm. and this is like, fairly complex, really well balanced. Um, I, I really like this. It's it's good. It's got like a the tiniest bit of plum mm -hmm. at the very end. It's drinkable, it's juicy. I think ball. okay. I'm ready to vote. You guys ready? Yeah. Mm, this is gonna be a tough one. I I like <laughs> the mango mead, but it's too not mead enough for me. Like I didn't think it meaty enough. <laughs> so not it's meaty enough. It is very meaty juicy, enough. and it's not. It's not. It's like a cider, and I think I could drink. More of the white cherry or whatever, wh whichever this is. Yeah. I think I could drink more of that. Yeah. Um, I just enjoy it more. Number um, one moves on. All right, we're at the last round of the quarterfinals. So this is um, number four versus number 15. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
and this is what's going to dictate, you know, what moves on of these of these group, and then um, of course we'll have our next uh, portion of the tournament. Let's start with number four. Oh, 100% no, it says. <laughs> Just you gotta smell it. Yeah. This is their original. This is the um, the peppermint mead that competed in the 2018 tournament. Oh, Fun fact. Two years. Yes. <clears throat> I don't care for it. Okay. Um, it's a funny acquired taste. It's got the peppermint. If you I, don't like peppermint, then you're you're out of luck. It has this, this like almost like almost like that weird aftertaste you get when you drink something that's made up with aspartame. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I can see what you're saying. I think it's like this like candy sweet sugar. sugar. Well, yeah, it, it, candy well, sugar. It thing. was. 52 candy canes in a gallon of water. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah. there's probably some of that sugar you're yeah. talking about in there. A little bit. For sure. Well, uh, let's move on to 15. Uh, I know what this one is. This one I didn't like so much. It's spicy. It's got some fruit characteristics. Um... What do you think it is? I, I know what it is, but I don't want to say it. I, I'm wondering if it's an apple pie bouche. Or what fruit do you feel like you get from it? I get orange. I get a lot of orange. I want to say it's the ancient orange. Mm -hmm. so I do remember I do remember it from earlier, but it's uh, mm -hmm. this is interesting. This one. is the Joe's ancient orange meat. So it's got like clove and uh, cinnamon okay. and orange. Because um, it's very faint. Yeah, it's the orange is not as in your face. Um, Interesting. And I don't think... Uh, so this is the last round, Chris? This is the last round of, of tasting for the quarters. So, so we all missed the watermelon? And we no. All, mm, what do you mean? We None of us called watermelon. Yeah, we did. Well, we uh, I call, at least called watermelon in the beginning. Maybe it was, it was hidden. I don't know. I could have not. Okay. I could have been wrong. I, I Maybe I didn't say it. Let's vote on this one. I don't know. Let's vote on this one. This is Peppermint, I think, versus the uh, Joe's Ancient Orange. Ancient Orange. I'm a hundred. I'm a Peppermint fan. Yeah, definitely yeah. Peppermint. Uh, at least, especially these two. Pe I'm a Peppermint fan. I'm not a big fan of Peppermint, though. Just in general. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Okay, we're going to reset the board real fast, and then I'll be right back. All right, here we are. We are in the semifinals of the Man Made Mead Tournament of 2020. You can see the board currently. Um, I'll put all the names of what's still up there. We don't know what means what necessarily. We have some um, idea after tasting them. But this is what we currently have, if you're interested. And these two, we, we set the meads on there to help us um, vote. And you'll see that here in a second. If you haven't seen the quarterfinals, go check it out to watch what happened there. But here's the semifinals. We're going to go ahead and jump right into this and start with mead number 11 and mead number 3. Alright, we're going to start with mead number 11. You're of course going to see what it is. Um, we have an idea what it is, but here we go. Mm-hmm. So, again, if you haven't watched the quarterfinals, go check it out. We eliminated out a couple of these and um, for some reasons. If you want to go ahead and vote and say, hey, um, I think that the blah, blah, blah mead's going to win, go ahead and do that. You should take your guess. But this is definitely the apple pie mm -hmm. bouche. I don't know if you... You said that earlier you had a, you were going back and forth between two. I went back and forth on a lot of these. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, it's still happening. Because, you know, when you look at it and you, and you, you look at the sheet and you're going, okay, we got raspberry, mixed berry, cherry, and these are all some sort of berry. Yeah. So, thing. Close. so those flavors when you're, you know, when you're trying to like think about it, they can be hard to. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know, they're all very similar. I, I'm confident that it's the apple pie bouche. Again, this is a guess because I don't have a list. I mean, I don't have the exact number of what it is in front of me, but mm -hmm. that's my guess. Let's try number three. Okay. Now, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I know what this one is. I know it. I think I said the wrong thing earlier about this one. I believe this is what I didn't guess on my sheets earlier, but the apple and cinnamon meat. 
Ah, really? uh, <clears throat> that would make sense. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I kind of see that. I, I think, think I can see that. I think this is that. I like it. I think it's really good. This is what won the tournament. This is not to impede your you know judgment or anything like that. <laughs> no. But this is what won the tournament in 2018. That in fact, the fun thing, the final two of that were the peppermint and the apple cinnamon, mm. which is interesting. So, all right, um, this is hard. This is where it gets harder because these are good. These are getting better meats. We've kind of got rid of the garbage ones. <laughs> no <laughs> well, I don't think any of them are garbage. None of them were really um, bad. Uh, this is hard, man. It's, yeah, uh, I'm gonna have to go. I think oh. it's, just, it's more complex. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's more complex. There's a lot more going on. It's a little bit sweeter. It's balanced yeah. still. That's going to upset some people. I'm going to say some people who have seen the tournament um, and who know about the apple cinnamon mead, they're going to think that one won. It's, might have just, it's super good. It, I it's, like it. It's good. I like it more than that one. But this is why we have three people. This is so that we don't have any tiebreakers. We have a real judgment. Okay. Uh, number 11 moves on. And... Um, here we go. This is number, uh, we're going to move on to number 14 and number 12. Alright, we are on number 12 versus number 14. We are going to start with number 12. The complexity, complexity of this one really helps a lot. The fact that it, it is complex, but it's not like too, um, like the beginning to end taste is the same. Does that make sense? There's it's, some meats yeah, that I've it's tried. Ba- it's balanced. It's yeah. consistent. Um, mm. Yeah, I, I, I enjoy this. I like this. Is, I, is this is this? Do we call this mixed berry? Yeah, earlier? we call this one okay. mixed berry. I, I think it's the mixed berry. It tastes like it. It has the berry flavors. Mm. I mean, we're talking blueberries and blackberries, um, strawberries. Like stuff like that, so you can kind of get that berry medley mm-hmm. from it. Um, I'm a fan. Let's go ahead and look at or try the 14 now. This is meat number 14. This is what this is what I'm talking about earlier. I confuse this with another one. I think this one, in hindsight, is just the cherry meat. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not so sure on that. I don't know. I mean, yeah. I don't get the chocolate side. I think it. I called it cherry earlier. Yeah. Well, that's what I said earlier. um, When we did the white chocolate cherry, and we did something else, we talked about, or I said something about how I I thought this this one was white chocolate cherry, but this one I think is just cherry. Yeah. So I confused. Yeah. I I thought this was cherry originally. (laughs) It's like um, it's not as mead as because I'd like, but. Yeah, it's you're saying it was more of like a wine. This yeah, was this was the one that I didn't rate very well. Oh really? Okay, I think so. All right, um, here we go. Let's vote. <laughs> uh, yeah, I had to go. I, I just think the mixed berry is a little more has more character to build upon. Like this one feels flat a little bit to me. The cherry just feels a little flat. Yeah, there's not a lot of life. There's not a lot. Of life. Doesn't lot going feels on. dimensional. There's not a lot going on. Okay, um, the number 12, what we think is the mixed berry, moves on. We're now going to move on to mead number four versus mead number one. All right, we have mead number four battling mead number one. Let's start with number four. This is very obvious what this one is, for sure. This has to be the peppermint, very sweet. We talked about this in the quarterfinals a little bit. I won't dive too deep into it. We know you're not a fan. Well, this is the more I'm drinking it, the le- almost the less, the less I like, like it. it. <laughs> yeah, the more you're exposed to it, the yeah. less you enjoy it. I, I hate to say that, I just... You know, I, that's fine, it's fair. This is the original peppermint mead that was second place in the tournament of 2018 so i think that's interesting uh, i'm a fan i maybe it's nostalgia factor to me maybe it's the fact i've made a lot of these it's that makes it a little bit harder for me to knock some of them out but uh, i like this one a lot here's number uh one okay yeah this is what going back to what we talked about a moment ago <clears throat> i love this 
Do you, what's the difference between this one and that to you? Number well, 12. We're not there yet, man. Gotta, I know, but like... This is what fruit. It has more fruity flavor? Yeah. Okay. That's really interesting. Because the methods by which the fruit were introduced um, is totally different. This, this, it's a little bit sweeter. It has a little bit more fruit. It's got this like rich chocolatey spice to it. Mm -hmm. um, it's it has a really cool color. Like when we were looking at it on the background earlier, it was like a really pretty color. It's really um, very full. That's Yeah, uh, full body. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's interesting. That's what I enjoy. Well, so I will say this. The, I think this is a white chocolate cherry. Mm -hmm. The fruit in that one was a puree. And the fruit in this one was actually a, uh, was this one? Or was it the cherry? I don't know. Whatever the other cherry one we did was actual cherry. Like. Real cherries. Yeah, real cherries. Interesting. Okay. So there was a difference. I don't I actually really like cherry flavoring very much. Uh, I think okay. come, I usually it usually comes off like artificial. Artificial, yeah. It, it gets, well, this is perfect because you don't like peppermint. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. I think I think this is very good. All right, let's vote. I gotta I gotta stick to my roots. Mm, I'm the tiebreaker. I'm the tiebreaker. You gotta be on. Oh, honest. Yeah. I'm actually like kind of mad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the upset. I, I okay. I'm a little salty that the apple cinnamon, my one of my favorites, didn't make it. So, I understand. Yeah, that, honestly, that one wasn't one of my So, favorites. the peppermint moves on. Um, the original peppermint from the 2018 tournament. We are now going to be facing number mead number 8 versus mead number 16. Okay, we have mead number 16. Versus me, number eight. We're going to start with number 16. Mmm, yeah. Yeah, I don't need to... It's interesting, the, the, um, compared to the last tournament I did, the confidence I have going into this, maybe it's because my palate's gotten a little better and I've made more and tasted these more. But whenever I did my original tournament, I was just like, I don't know what this is. <laughs> like, <laughs> I got half of them wrong. I feel confident with this. This is... That pineapple Definitely. habanero. I, so the more I'm tasting this, the more I like it. Mm -hmm. um, I, you you did a good job of like getting that like fruitiness that habaneros can have. Like mm -hmm. just the pepper itself mm -hmm. kind of comes out nicely in that. I can't claim much. I used a pepper, a habanero, a pineapple habanero jam. Uh, and it just it, it, it I would if you had told yeah. me that you used real habanero yeah. and, and real pineapple, I would, I would believe you. you. It's, yeah. it, it's uh, if you want to use it, it's called pot liquor kitchen. They make a bunch of different stuff, but. I really like it. Um, it's it's very good. Yeah, I'm a fan of this. Um, it's that the heat's just enough. Yes, I couldn't drink a lot of it. Mm -hmm. It's definitely like a small taster. Yeah, but I think like I kind of have like barbecue or something with it. Yeah, <laughs> it just sounds good. The mead pairing. That's what mm -hmm. I want to get to in the future is mead mm -hmm. pairing and food pairing with things. Let's move on to number eight now. Oh yeah, we were we were here earlier. I got a. I, this is this is the pyramid. It's just so enjoyable. You like, okay. dude. This is so crazy. Cause you are all <laughs> about this one. I don't know. I like it. I I didn't like it as much initially. Yeah. The more I'm tasting it, I can see the potential. I think I, that it has. I can see, but my problem is I can see potential, but I'm not gonna go and open each bottle. You know what I mean? Like, no. like if I redid it, I think it could be really good. I think this would be delicious, just canned and sparkling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I, I definitely want to revisit it at some point. Yeah. Slightly sweeter. If I'm going to vote, yeah. I'm going to be honest, I can't vote for that. I, I, I'm actually going to vote for the habanero. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I think it's a better it's better made, but yeah. I just <clears throat> I just think it's an honorable mention. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I it's, it's more complex. I They'll accept that. Wow. And that's, the, that's the end of the semifinals. That's right. pretty crazy. Nice. Hey, so the uh, number eight, mo or sorry, number eight is eliminated. The number 16. Moves on. Alright, and welcome back to the uh, Mead Tournament of 2020. So I'm really excited to do this. This is the finals. We have the grand finals, of course, after this. We were breaking down the um, final four of this tournament. What we currently have, you can see the board here, is um, a... Uh, I'll put, make sure to put all the numbers, uh, or not numbers, the names of each thing, and what's been eliminated, what's still in play. Right now, we don't know what exactly is on the board. We have guessed 
pretty roughly what is what, but there's not a um, precise knowledge. So these are our four we currently have competing, what you're going to see today. And we're going to go ahead and get started with mead number 11 versus mead number 12. All right, here is mead number 11 versus mead number 12. Let's start with mead number 11, guys. As we keep going, like, I'm confident, but I'm also not at all. This, I think, I think this is the raspberry boche. What? Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? Mm, I, I mean, maybe. This one was the one that I thought was the apple cinnamon mead. Yeah, I don't think it's an apple cinnamon mead. No. I think it's a boche. Some kind of boche? I've got mine. I... I don't know how many times I've called the apple pie boche out. I maybe a couple, but I think it might Wait. be that. No, you're right. You're, you're, I'm getting that now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I get it now. I think it's apple. No, pie. I can see that more. The spices. I don't know why. Yeah, it's it like, me off. The spices have like a had a fruity side to it to it that made me feel that way. No, it's definitely that apple pie. You're right. Because I get more of the that um, cinnamon. Like, there mm -hmm. wouldn't be cinnamon in that raspberry. You got baking spice. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Kind of okay. reminds me of uh, banana bread. Just huh? the smell. Yeah, I know. I didn't get that. Mm -hmm. I like it. Um, it's not very smooth. I think the problem with this one, as we get further along, is awkward. the finish of it, it's a little bitey to me. Like, that... that um... There's some astringency bitterness to it. I don't find that. But, but the spices it's... are, like, almost... Not, like, too much, but they're just in your face, yeah. for sure. Very forward. Yeah. I like it for sure. I think it's the finish. It's a little bit different. And this is where we get to be a little bit more nitpicky as to what, mm -hmm. you know, because we get to hopefully the best of the best within these. All right, let's try number 12 now. Okay. Yep. I was wrong. What do you think this one is? I actually still think it's a mixed berry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That definitely makes berry. Coming off that, that boche taste. I definitely had a moment where I, I mixed the boche and the, the berry, and I was like, that's a raspberry. <laughs> but now, like, just trying to, you know. I'm, I'm at a... I actually think the... If this is a mixed berry, I, I think the mixed berry is more, more balanced, like, all yep. the way through from start to finish. Um, it's even. It's, it's got a really nice texture. Um, but I think... The boche is more complex and just generally more interesting. This is what I love about this. This is where we get to the hard part. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta make a choice. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I actually don't. I the astringency at the end I think is kind of like just an interesting character. Yeah. Like, uh, of of the. Not oh, necessarily right. like of the juice, yeah. yeah. No, I don't think it's attracting at all. No. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Mm. Time to vote. So I gotta take a second to like have a. I. Mm. No, you're gonna make me be the. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go with that because I think it's. I just oh, think it's complex man. and interesting, it and it's delicious. They're both really good, though. I would be happy to drink either. It's also a little bit situational for me. Yeah, I it's think, true. I think. I think that I, it is perfect that I'm the one to do this because the people scream at me. They're gonna scream at me. <laughs> I think that the mixed berry has a more rounded. Body, like I would yeah. prefer to drink yeah. a whole glass of mixed berry, as opposed to the apple pie boche. I feel like the apple pie boche is more. It has more. It's stouter. It's more niche. Yeah, it's more yeah. stout, and you could have. A, I, I'm just thinking in in um, which one I want to drink more of. That's how I'm basing this. I know that's it's very situational because yeah, it depends on the time of night when you're drinking it. Blah blah blah, all those things, but. Do it. <laughs> do it. I feel like I'm losing here. I feel like I've like lost. No, I, there's nothing wrong or bad about that. This is the hard part of it. Is is the vote? I think okay. Um, it, there we go. They're good. Okay, here we go. Let's. Uh, we're gonna fix the board a little bit. 
the mixed berry, or number 12, what we think is the mixed berry, is moving on. Unfortunately, the apple pie boucher, or number 11, um, has been knocked out. So we are now going to vase number four versus number 16. <laughs> All right, we're moving on to the last round of our finals, and then we get to our grand finals. This is number 16 versus number 11. Let's start with number 16. Is it 16 and four or 16 and four? 16 and four. Oh, I'm sorry, four. I said 11, it's four. I keep looking at my judge number for some reason. I still, I'm still a big fan of this. I like the heat on it. It's very, um. Well, okay, here's a question. What do you think the ABV on this is? They will know because I'll have put this information in here. What do you think the ABV on this one is? I can't imagine it's very high. No, nothing more than 10. I want to say oh, like... Oh, wow, it's being generous. I, I would have said really? like... Yeah, I was going to say like 4, 5 to 6. Maybe like <laughs> 7, okay. like I, nine, I think it, it may just be really balanced in. Because, I mean, that's the other factor of this is like... Mm -hmm. I don't really... I don't really have a way to like gauge it because you don't really see like any sort of you don't see I don't know you can't really see the alcohol like yeah. the legs on it I mean to like gauge how viscous it is but if I I think this one is at least a thirteen what <laughs> it is at least a thirteen percent it does not feel I get a little bit of alcohol sweetness on the finish but like it doesn't it's feel very, very alcoholic I, and that's me going off of information from. I mean, there's 16 meats here. I'm trying to remember all the information about what I put into them in their gravity. But I think this is at 13%. I'll make sure and put it on screen and for what it actually is. But it's a little higher. That's the, what's fascinating about this one is that it has, uh, it's, it's smooth. And it's really hmm. kind of young. I think it's about a year old. Um, Interesting. Okay, let's uh, go on to number four now. This is a vastly <laughs> different meat. It's just the... <laughs> I, I, it's just the weird kind of candy sugar thing at the end. That's yeah. yeah that, the, um, that's all it is. That's fake, it. fake sugar idea. Yeah. yeah. Like aspartame. You know what's interesting to me? Um, I have made this candy cane meat many different times. This last time I made it... But the first time I made it, I did 52 candy canes in a gallon of water. Then I did 216 candy canes in a bunch of water with honey. <laughs> this last time I made it, I did 600 peppermints. And it is, like, it's in the, that meat room right now. And it looks like Pepto-Bismol. Looks like you just poured Pepto-Bismol in a six-gallon carboy. Oh, so there's a, a different color. Like, you, this thing looks like a mead. The one that I have right now does not look like a mead. No, not at all. It's pink. So... Um, I, I think this one has some rounded characters, but this is hard because they're both really good. They're very different. Mm. We're going to vote differently this time. Um, I'm going to say one, two, three, and I want you to put down where, which one you choose instead of having us. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I like the peppermint. I just think it's more niche. If you're gonna find something to drink all year round, you're gonna probably go for the pineapple habanero. Yeah, I mean, I mean maybe. The, the the peppermint is 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 a seasonal. It is. Yeah. Thing. That's uh, that's what I mean. It's like those those months December. I, I you think know, the hab months. habanero pineapple is like a summertime yeah. type thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, know. that's surprising. Um, you know, if you pick the uh, the uh, candy cane mead to win, peppermint mead to win. Um, sorry, but. Moving on, <laughs> we have the uh, pineapple habanero, or number 16. Um, that is the winner of this battle. Here is the grand finals of the Mead Tournament of 2020. Hey, this is Man Made Mead. Today we're finishing out the Mead Tournament of 2020. If you are familiar with the channel, you might have seen the 2018 Mead Tournament, and it took me a couple years, but here we are. In 2020, I have faced 16 of my newest, some of my newest Meads and some of my old Meads um, in, to this tournament, and uh, I included the winner from the 2018 Mead and the runner-up. Um, however, 
they have not made it this far. So we are now going to be crowning a new champion at the end of this video. Here's currently what the board looks like. Here's the board currently. You can see that I will include all of the names, everything that's been knocked out and everything that is currently still active. We are left with Meads number 12 and Mead number 16 as the grand finalist uh, competitors. So, um, of course, I want you to, in the comments, predict who you think will win because I think that would be really interesting. But we're going to go ahead and get started. And this round's going to be really hard because we've dictated or we've broken down these meads into our personal favorites. And while there has been, um, we've, we've talked about reasons why we prefer some others over others, uh, I think we've come down and, and voted that these two are the best ones. Um, so this is going to be really tough. Let's go ahead and, and do it. This is mead number 12 versus mead number 16. Here is number 12 versus number 16. We're going to start with number 12. Okay, so I'm realizing the alcohol is a little more present in this than mm -hmm. I originally realized. Uh, what do you think the ABV on this one is? It's not a trick question. I'm not trying to. <clears throat> it, it does feel like it is less than 16 with pineapple habanero. It's mm -hmm. uh, feel like it is less than 13%. Okay. Somewhere in there. 10 to 12. What do you think? 8. I catch it in the nose quite a bit though. So, But it just feels, I mean, it's a little out of balance maybe. Mm -hmm. The alcohol itself is. I'll, I will tell you, I think the range of all these has, so far has been at least 12 to up to maybe 18 okay. uh, today on all of these. I don't wow. think I have anything below 12. So wow. this thing, I'll put it of course on the screen what it is. But I think it's about 13 or 14. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong. But there, this one, the sweetness really helps counteract how, I mean, the, the alcohol is more present, like you're saying. It definitely is, it's kind of in your face, but the, the sweetness, and then there's just like the roundness of those, the mixed berry that I really like. That's working mm -hmm. well. I can't remember, I should know this, but I made two of these mixed berry meats. I used like a berry medley from Sam's for one, and then I also used like a fake Amaretti, like, uh, not fake, but a alternative flavoring for mixed berry. So I think this one was from my real berries I put in. I like it. I think it's good. Um, we're going to put it up here. It's in the green slot. In a moment, what we're going to do, we will be voting um, on which one we think is the winner. And the reason, of course, there's three of us is because I wanted to bring friends into this, but it's helpful to also have some more um, voting power and input. So let's move on now to mead number 16. Here we are. Again, these are very different. With this being, um, I, we still think this one's the pineapple habanero. We think that one's a mixed berry. If we're wrong, then <laughs> something's that, wrong. With well, us. the funny thing is, in the 2018 tournament, I got all the way to the grand finals. I didn't know what the the um, I knew what the peppermint was, but the other one, which was apple cinnamon, I didn't know what it was. <laughs> and I like I. Ended up crowning it winner and then having to go back and find out what it was. So, it's funny that we know what this is mm -hmm. this time. I like this one. It's very smooth. I feel like they have similar alcohol burn, though. Maybe it's the burn from the... I don't, I don't yeah. catch it in the nose at all. You know? No, but I do catch the peppers in the back of the throat quite a bit. Yeah, oh, I guess it's the pepper. This has more sweetness. The mixed berry, for sure, on the nose. Man, this is tough. This is... I think two of... Two of my best, hopefully two of my best at this point. All right. All right. <clears throat> Seems like it's time to make a choice. All three? Hold on, I gotta think. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta I think about it. I, 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 I can't just jump in the pool. I, I feel can't. confident in mine. You feel I, confident? Yeah, yeah I feel confident in mine. I'm pretty no, I don't feel confident in mine. <laughs> Dang it. I feel very confident in my choice. <laughs> oh, that's. Okay, hold on. This is <laughs> this is hard. <laughs> maybe it's because of a problem with my own. That's yeah. Maybe it makes it it's like fun. picking between your own children. Huh, do this. Which one do you like more? That's hard. <laughs> That's the Just challenge. say it without thinking. No, uh, they're they're very even right now. Literally very even. I think there's a clear winner here. 
Don't swing. <laughs> <laughs> I think that one of them is very obviously better than the other one. Um, <laughs> gotta make a choice. Which side? Okay. I made my choice. All right. Three, two, one, drop. Right. <laughs> oh, I guess yeah. you didn't have to think too hard. Well, yeah, yeah. okay. So I, I weighed it down. Um, I feel like I like the mixed berry, but this is much smoother. Mm -hmm. Like it's much smoother. It's got better honey character, in my opinion. It's, it's just got a better still, balance. Still, like it's still niche though. Is, but I like that. I like the fact of that. Yeah. The, yeah, not everyone's gonna like the habanero. Yeah. yeah. I just, I it's grown on me. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely better than the last time I had it a few mm -hmm. months ago. Um, if I don't know if it was the same batch. That was or, a different one actually. Okay. I think the one you had before. But, yeah, the other one was like way peppery, like over I, overwhelmingly peppery. Yeah. So, the mead winner of the 2020 tournament is the mead number 16, which we believe is the pineapple habanero, and I'm fairly confident in that, and I think we're all fairly confident yeah. in that, because uh, it's hard to miss a habanero pepper. Mm -hmm. But, that is crowned the winner of this, and um, again, this has been very interesting, because... If you can see the board, we we had the um, some winners from the previous tournament occur, and we also had some. I'm I'm very surprised that some of them didn't make it further. In fact, um, what I want to do is I want to talk about here in a second, in um, kind of like a little after show uh, about some things that might surprise us about this tournament. But this thing is really really good, and if you picked the pineapple habanero to win the whole tournament, then man, awesome job! I would love to hear what you thought was going to win it. Um, it's interesting. It, that's that's kind of the fun of this. So, man, I, I'm just very shocked. Thank you guys for watching. Um, if you want to go check out the 2018 tournament, I of course, that's on YouTube, and I'll put a link to that. There is a link to the other videos, the quarterfinals, semifinals, and finals. Um, if you want to see the kind of after show uh, as we talk about a little bit of this process and, um, you know, maybe some things that surprised us i'll have a video about that but i appreciate you guys taking your time go check out the other videos if you haven't and i'll see you guys next time cheers welcome to the after show of the man made me tournament of 2020 um i have my friends chris and tony here and we're going to be talking about Maybe some of the things that surprised us with this tournament. Um, I definitely was very shocked with a couple things. I did not anticipate the pineapple habanero being the one to win it all. I was a little shocked. What did you yeah. guys think? And, and we'll talk about kind of our score sheet here in a second and maybe some things. Um, like, let's first start with that. What did you rate in the, out of 70, the pineapple habanero, which is number 16? The very 16, final the very mean last, that each hit. Yeah, the very last one. The, the pineapple habanero. Yeah, actually didn't. Uh, yeah. Mine, but. I, so if I have a guess correctly, which I think I did, was we. Yeah, I do. I, I guessed it correctly originally. What did you I, give, I give out it out of 50, seventy? I go to fifty-three out of seventy. Okay, what did you give out of uh, seventy, Chris? Out of seventy, fifty-eight. I gave it a sixty out of seventy, which was not my top score. I believe my top score was a sixty-five. Um, I don't know what you guys have um, for your top I think score. I, I think a 63 was maybe the highest. Yeah, 60, I think 66. Um, so what, let's take, let's find, what was your top rated? That's, that'll be interesting. So and you are, and I, I will mention this, um, the reason we have these score sheets is because we, before we did the tournament, we taste tested everything to see, uh, to give a greater rating, and I'll have a video specifically about those, the ratings that we gave, but... Um, what did you guys rate? So I didn't give very many things over 60. Um, yeah, they were. They I did were give... Two. If you, looks like the highest I gave was a 66. Wow. And Which one was that? It was what I thought was... It was me number nine. Me number nine was the Orange Blossom Traditional. That, that's what I have. That's what I checked out. Okay. Right. So I guess that was right. Yeah. But yeah. Um, where is that? On the... Uh, me number nine ended up is it somewhere on that side. Look over there. Uh, where is it? 
Six. 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 No, there's Seven. we lost a one up there. Okay. Well, at any rate, um, yeah, that's what I gave it. That's what I gave the highest. I it didn't... was. Yeah. It was super rich, like really full, um, like a good sweet start. It was very complex. Um, I liked it. That's better. interesting because I gave the Orange Blossom traditional. Um, I thought it was mean number three though. What? Oh my! I gave the top rated score to the meat tournament from uh, 2018. Though I thought that was the apple cinnamon. The same. I thought number three. Oh, this is a different one, not yours. But number three, I thought that was the orange blossom traditional. When in reality, it was oh, the so. apple and cinnamon from two and a half years ago. Okay. Mm. What do you think was top, Chris? Top for me was the uh, meat number fourteen, which I thought was the cherry meat. I, um, I really enjoyed. It was. It was okay. just the straight up cherry meat. Mm -hmm. I yep. enjoyed that one a lot. That one stuck out to me quite a bit. Yeah, uh, I liked the color, the overall evenness of the flavor. Yeah, the profile was very. Here, good. I'll go through. Go from go from the beginning. Can I do this? Yeah, go from the beginning. I'll, I'll say it. Like, here, I'll say it. I'll, I'll go from the top. Okay. We'll just... All right. So mead number one was the white chocolate cherry mead. That's what I gave it. White chocolate cherry, yeah. Chris. Uh. Yep. Yeah. yeah, white chocolate. Okay. Mead number two was the. Um, gotta find it. Mango mead. Yeah, I gave it the I gave it the orange mead, the Joe's ancient orange. Joe's ancient orange, yeah. Yeah, it's very. I I, I like the mango mead. I gotta revamp it a little bit before I can make it into what I want. I liked it. I liked it. That's good. good. It's just. I gave it a fifty-three very, yeah. out of seventy. I thought that yeah. was a good score. Yeah, fifty-five. Number three was the apple and cinnamon mead. Oh, I really oh yeah, I really got that one wrong. I gave <laughs> yeah. I, 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 clover. clover. Put down the same we both are saying clover. That's weird because I feel like the. It's an apple and cinnamon, so like that spice well, yeah. would hopefully pop more. It's like a faint, uh, it's it, faint to me. Clover is spicy. Yeah. Um, Can be. Number four. I of course, three. is the peppermint mead. I give it a 48. 48? <laughs> <laughs> I still thought I was being a little I, I gave it a 53. What'd you give the peppermint mead? I, I gave it a 59. Wow, okay. So I, was, I was a little more generous in that one. Yeah, I... I liked it. I liked um, it a lot. I, I like it. Um, let's go to meet number five. Five? I, what'd you guys think it was? Uh, I tell you. The basic bouche. Basic bouche. Yep. I actually thought for the, some reason this was the raspberry bouche. Hmm. And I think in hindsight, I realized that later on, but I didn't go want, want to go change it. I was just like, hey. How far did it, how far did it get? The, I eliminated the first yeah, round. Yeah, I was yeah. down the first round. <laughs> but I gave it a 63. Seven. I gave it a good score. That's Seven. interesting. 50. That it didn't make it that far. Some of them, that's what I mean is like, that 16, I I don't know. I can't remember what how many points I gave it, but I don't think I gave it the max. It wasn't the max, so. No. Uh, let's go, was that mead number five? Mead number six is the watermelon mead. Oh. Oh, weird, I had that really wrong. <laughs> uh, uh, I said that was the mixed berry. I said it was a raspberry. Okay, yeah. What'd you guys so give it number-wise? Uh, I give it a 43 out of 70. I, I give it a 57. Okay, I give it a 49. That's very different. Yeah, yeah very different scores. I didn't, I was very, I was really confused. Well, yeah. and and th you know, this is why scores are very um, subjective. You right. Know? It's like it really depends on the person tasting the stuff. Yeah, for sure. Um, meat number seven. What did you think it was? <laughs> I got these. I, I gave this. I thought it was a mixed berry. I I thought this one was the raspberry boche. <laughs> I got these totally backwards. I got my basic boche as the raspberry boche, ah, and my raspberry okay. boche as a basic mm -hmm. boche. Yeah, I thought this was the basic boche. It's the raspberry. This one, okay. Raspberry got boche. Yes, got this mm -hmm. one right. Meat number eight. It's the, the pear mead, right? Yeah, I, I have pear yep. here. This is the pear. Pear mead. That was easy. Number nine. What do you think this one was? Ooh, I got this one wrong. Uh, is this the orange blossom tradition? Ah, uh -huh, that's what I have. But, well, that doesn't make any sense because I'd already. Oh, never mind. It is, though. It is? It is the oh, orange oh, blossom that, tradition. That's correct. I got it. Okay. I don't, I, don't I, I don't know what I thought I. Did, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I put like, the clover I traditional. Mm. This is painting out for me to not and know I, and I anything this... about my own meat making experience. <laughs> I give this a 66. Um, I give this a 66. I I gave it a... <laughs> Dang. Wait, are we on 9? Is that yeah. 9? Okay, I was going to say, I gave it a really low. I gave it a... This is my highest scoring one. Really? Yeah. Yep. I gave it a 40. I did not 40? like it as much. Really? 
for some reason. I was not a big fan of this one. And it, where is it? Number nine. And it's somehow it's not on the number. board. I will grab it off this. I don't remember where. It must be in one of those two slots. All right, we're going to talk about this number nine because um, we find it really interesting. I gave it a 40. Tony gave it a 66. I give it a 50. Um, and he, Tony thought it was the orange blossom. Chris thought it was orange blossom. Um, and I was very wrong because it was the orange blossom. I thought it was a clover. Why? What are you thinking about this one? So nice color. Um, I gave it a nine on color. Light gold, uh, slightly hazy. I think Do you it's... like the slight haze? Yeah, I don't mind that. I think I think um, you know it's unfiltered. It's unfine. Mm -hmm. It's it's. That's to the character. Yeah, um, it gives it, it gives it like a fuller body, or it can imply a little bit fuller body. Um, strong honey character, creamy, it was floral, had a nice sweet start, it was complex, balanced all the way through, uh, it was dry on the, on the finish and clean. Um, obviously the honey character, that's what it's showcasing, was on point, has this nice oily, rich, full body. Mm -hmm. um, and I, yeah, I, I thought it was very enjoyable. I, I definitely, I, mean, I don't remember what I was thinking exactly what I, what I said. I said, not super clear. I don't know why I thought clarity, I don't normally think clarity is the end of the world. I don't know why I would have broken down. I said not a rabid flavor. I said weird bitey finish, which. Mm. See, I think it's very rounded. Like, it's pretty soft. Yeah. I definitely get it more, it still has a, um, Maybe a more medicinal, like you were saying earlier, taste to it. I think it's very pure, pure. I think it's got the good honey character, good honey. Well, I, I didn't think it was bad by any set, by any means, but like, I just also, I don't know, obviously didn't think it was the most amazing thing. What do you think, Chris? Um, <clears throat> it wasn't my favorite, but I did, I did kind of enjoy how consistent the flavor was throughout. Mm -hmm. I think age is helped. This thing or, um, is, one of my first four meads. Oh, so wow. it's two wow. and a half years old. So it's, wow. Yeah. And That's it's, and again, 14%. It's, yeah. <laughs> woo. Yeah, pretty interesting. Okay. Number 10. We're gonna move on. Oh. Um, number 10, what do you think it was? I thought it was a watermelon mead. Wow. Um, I said 10 was I got the... these backwards. You're freaking <laughs> kidding me. <laughs> I thought, this was the orange blossom traditional. I thought the orange blossom was the clover traditional. What, okay. Which one is this one? I this is this the, the Joe's ancient. This is the clo uh, clover traditional. Oh, oh okay. okay. Yeah. I really got that wrong. Yeah, I was really <laughs> confident in the watermelon too. Yeah. I was one slot off. But what number was the watermelon? Over there. It's number uh, six. It didn't make it out of first bracket. Oh, <laughs> weird. Okay. But number 10, oh, it didn't make it out of first bracket either. This is it right here. So. What did I score the watermelon? Um, I gave it, I thought it was the raspberry, yeah. It's, I still scored it well, I gave it a 57 and a 70. Yeah. yeah. I didn't give, I didn't give this one a, a very high rating. I gave the uh, number 10 a 27 out of 70. Oh. What? Oh, I, wow. I was not happy about it. Okay. That was That's interesting. Strange. Um, okay, number 11. What'd you think it was? I thought it was apple pie moshe. I... Y yes, it was the apple pie lotion. I thought it was the chocolate and vanilla lotion. <laughs> I thought it was the apple the heck? cinnamon meme. What the heck? Mm. Man, my pal. Um, yeah, I uh, I give this one a 50 out of 70. I give it a 60. Yeah. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, <laughs> 60 as well. So, but I gave it, I gave, so the difference is I gave it an 8 on color. Mm -hmm. um, and then I gave it 13 on the nose. Um, you get it 15. I yeah, it, I'd like to point off of the uh, the finish. I didn't quite like... It, I give it a 10 out of 10 on the finish. It was, it was a little bit... Of, I didn't give perfect scores on hardly anything. I, yeah, I didn't. I think I gave one. I think I like the body of it. Or, I don't know. That's just, that was, I actually, it was slightly thin for me. I only gave it a 7. Let's get to number 12. This was the mixed berry mead, I think at least. Yep, mixed berry meat. Okay. What do you guys think? Cherry. Cherry? I had said it was. This was what was the runner up, by the way. What'd you give the runner up in points? Uh, runner up. I gave it 55 points. 55? 
Uh, 63. 63, yeah. So, I mean, that one's still got some high ratings. I really, I, I really, really like that. I, I thought it was really, obviously it made it really far. It made it as yeah. a runner up, which is, it's not on the board right now. I think that's one thing we took off too. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's okay. Um, 13. I got so many of these backwards, and I'm so <laughs> mad at myself. I thought the chocolate vanilla boche was the apple pie boche. This is and the, the apple pie boche was the vanilla. Yes, this is the vanilla chocolate and vanilla mm. boche. Uh, this one is probably your highest. One of my favorites. Really? Of all of them. Yeah. Really? I gave it a 65 out of 10. Wow. Interesting. This is my. I will add. This is my original chocolate and vanilla boche. I had made a secondary one. This was the one. From about a year ago. So this has had some age on it. It's had some help. I, I mean, I didn't give it that high rating though. I gave it 49. I, oh wow. I, I rated it kind of low. Well yeah. Too. That's I was mostly. Uh, part of this is the taste, like your personal taste and what you like. Yeah. So. Uh, 14. We're at the last couple. Um, what do you think it was? So I think this was my this lowest was the, rated one. Really? This was my highest rated one. Actually. And I and I thought it was the cherry mead. It is the cherry mead, yes. Okay. I didn't check it on here, but I remember, because I have the notes yeah, yeah. here, that, that's what I thought it's it was. It's the cherry mead. It was, I thought it was a white chocolate cherry. This is what I mean. I got confused earlier. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Even in the board during the, while we were playing, um, I thought that was the white chocolate cherry, and it was it was flipped. It's just the cherry. So I gave it a 59 out of 70. I thought it was good. Um, I said not a consistent honey character, because I didn't feel like it was... No, it, and, and it was the finish was short. It was pretty thin. It didn't have a lot going on. Mm -hmm. um, it was just like this nice... It was, it was a nice bright red color, but it wasn't... Like, there wasn't anything necessarily um, interesting about it all the yeah. way through. Um, it, wasn't, I it wasn't bad. I, it's interesting. How far did it make it? It was... You, got, got you guys far. liked it more than I I liked it. Yeah, this was my highest rated... Where I wish we okay it, it <laughs> yeah, came out of it, it got to right. semis yeah. but it didn't make it out of semis, um, which is fine. Which which it was up against number thirteen, which yeah. was one of my highest rated. Which was uh, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah yeah. It was the other. Uh, yeah I yeah I really like this. I don't know if you guys are wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go to number fifteen. Number fifteen. Um, what did you think it was? Um, I thought it was the mango, which is obviously not right, because we we thought it was a mango earlier. Was it the watermelon? Mm -hmm. it's Joe's Ancient Watermelon. Oh, okay. I said this one was the watermelon. Yeah. So I gave this one pretty high marks. 57. Ooh, 37. I, yeah, I not a, great. I, gave I did it 56. not give it. I thought it was pretty smooth. I liked it. Um, it w It's aged better. It's um, definitely really spicy. I think when I made it, I made it pretty hot on the I, spices. I think that's what really threw me off of this one. Really What'd you say? Fifty-seven. Or Joe's agent. Joe's agent. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Last one, and it's funny that the this one won the entire <laughs> tournament. But number sixteen, which I didn't tally up. Let me. I gotta think for a second. This actually was my highest rated. I think I lied earlier. Mm -hmm. I gotta do some tallying. Three, four, two. Uh. Six, no, this was not my highest rated. I gave this one a sixty out of seventy. That's not pretty good. Yeah. This was. I gave it a 53. Did you guys think yeah. it was pineapple? Yeah, it was yeah we, pineapple we all, habanero. It's pretty unanimous. It, it very clear. I think the habanero really. Well, and I, I think I'm actually not like uh, going through this. I'm not that surprised that it won, considering how we all gave yeah. it like pretty solid scores. Yeah. Um, consistently mm -hmm. across the across the board. I I was thinking that this. We might not end up like that. Well, like we would have rated something higher. Obviously, we have some ratings that are higher than each other's, mm -hmm. but for us to have a pretty consistently high rating for all this one um, is clear that that one's pretty good. I, I did not anticipate this one to win. If I was being very honest with you, I, I thought just on guessing alone that the the apple cinnamon mead with some age was going to be really good from two and a half years ago. I thought that one could have won. I was um, and I was very hopeful for like the orange blossom traditional. Me too. So that was the one that I really, really I scored the highest. Yeah. And then I actually thought the chocolate and vanilla boche was actually. I actually thought that was gonna. Oh, work. which I'm very pleased with. I'm glad that, that that one's turned out pretty good because it it uh, age has definitely helped that. I think the biggest factor with mead making is that you just have to have some age to help it. 
you know, yeah. mellow out. And, and wine, too. Like, how do you do? You let it set in a, in a barrel for a and long every, time? And every, you know, all these products are different. Like, some wines are meant to be drunk young. Yeah. Some, some of these reeds may be meant to be drunk young. Yeah, and um, I, the, the unique thing about all these is they're not all really sweet. I think most commercial meads, if you go try some, are pretty sweet. Oh, yeah. Chaucer's um, comes to mind. With yeah. Sweetness. And it's it just... I think that the idea of sweetness sells is like a big thing for mead making. And I, I like that I'm hoping to get away from that and have the the honey character sells. Even the not, even the meads that are like relatively sweet in this, they're not that sweet. No. Yeah, I mean, no, no, no. There's nothing that's so in your face that it hurts. So No, you could still drink a fair amount of yeah. your sweetest mead um, and not feel like you're weighed down yeah. or anything. This has been, I, I'm definitely shocked. I did not, I knew I liked the pineapple habanero, but I did not think it'd be the mead tournament winner. And when I was picking my meads, of course, I tried to pick the things that I hope to be the best that I've made. Um, and I think I came out with, you know, picking the top 16. I've made a bunch of garbage meads, stuff that doesn't work, <laughs> quite frankly. And uh, not that the pineapple, pineapple habanero was one that I didn't think would work. I thought it was more niche for sure, because not everybody likes hot drinks, especially. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, that's interesting for, for this to come out. And I did like doing this too, like having the rating system. Um, I'll be doing a, a more in-depth video on each specific mead and tallying up the results of uh, all of our scores combined in, in each category so that you can see what actually happened in that regard. But, um, you know, you guys have any final thoughts for, for this whole experience? Is there anything you would do different or anything that you really uh, liked about it? Um, I would maybe not have uh, wanted to even know what my really? options were. They're just, yeah. Yeah, um, and not even really worry about this. I mean, uh, don't get me wrong, this this was good. I mean, I, I got, I think I got actually a lot of them mm -hmm. correct. I, I think I, I think missed, you got more correct than me. <laughs> I think I, I missed a few. I know I missed a few, yeah. but... Um, <clears throat> that I think then you don't have any bias you can't like look at this and go like mm -hmm. oh I'm tasting these things yeah which I don't think I I don't I personally don't think I did that very much but um you know I don't know um yeah. and then and then maybe I don't know do bigger oh yeah I would like I would love to do bigger in the future I'll maybe talk about doing um not my meads but other people's meads so we'll see about that that'll take some more planning but yeah. Cool. Hey, this is Man Made Mead. Today we're going to be discussing the results of the Mead Tournament of 2020. And uh, I want to kind of dive deeper into it than I did before. So the way this tournament worked um, was I brought my friends over. I had my 16 meads that I had created, um, you know, old and some kind of young and whatever. And we faced them against each other in this tournament style bracket. So the whole tournament happened. And we judged everything in the tournament based off of uh, mainly the uh, what we liked more of, like which mead tasted better than the other. Um, we got a little bit into the nitty gritty of like why it tasted better, each one tasted better than the other, but we really just based it solely on which one was more enjoyable. The other kind of competition we did was before the tournament started, um, when they came over, we sat down, I distributed the meads, and we taste tested every single one of them and judged them based on a series of categories. And I'll show you a picture of the, the uh, paper I'm using and the, the judging sheet. Uh, so it has some important things on it, like of course, what mead is it? Um, or sorry, what mead number is it? Because they didn't know what mead, uh, what meads were what. They knew, only knew what numbers they were. So I had randomized them um, about a week ago and given them random numbers. And so I even didn't really know what was what because I tried to not remember what numbers I assigned. I tried to make it as fair as possible. So each mead had just a number. And then of course, in the back end, I was able to say what was what. The judge number, um, I was the first judge and uh, Chris was the second judge. Tony was the third judge. The score sheet, what they each mead was judged on was, was this, uh, color and appearance, you could give that up to 10 points. So color, what color is it? Appearance, is it hazy? Does it have uh, lots of um, legs or like bubbling, stuff like that um, on there? The nose or bouquet, so what does it smell like? Uh, does it smell like honey? Does it smell like a mead or wine or whatever? And when you taste it, of course, if it tastes like cherry, 
Does it smell like cherry on the nose? So there's some points there for that. Flavor, how's it taste? Does it taste good, bad? Does it have a weird thing going on? Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, finish, does it finish with, um, you know, alcohol burn? Does it finish with a nice taste of whatever, you know, flavor you got in the beginning? Um, character presence, sorry, honey character presence. Does it taste like honey? Does it have those, the warm, um, floral notes that a uh -huh, mead should have. And then of course, mouthfeel, body, does it feel thin? Is it like slimy? What does it taste like? Or what does it feel like? Uh, totaling up to 70 points. And we'll talk about that here in a second. I have all of the, um, all of their results, all of my results and the top, uh, the s entire score sheet of what was ranked first overall for everybody in that stuff. So then they, of course they could guess what mead it was. So let's go ahead and get into the actual, um, the judging portion. I am going to go through, and you can see here on the screen, I have um, taken and tabulated everything for each judge. So the, um, like, you know, each, there's judge number, there's the mean number, this is what was truly there. Uh, and, you know, of course I put like, what, what did they guess, those things. So let's go off of, I'm first gonna discuss, before I get into the, I know that everyone wants to know what the number one mead was, but I wanna get that here in a second. Uh, I had a couple, I'm gonna go off mine first since I was judge number one. I had a couple ties, you can see my total points. Um, I get, only gave a few, like, meads the top point value, mead number three, um, which I, I guessed wrong. Uh, I thought it was the Orange Blossom Traditional is actually the winner of the 2018 tournament. Um, got a 10 out of 10 for color and appearance and almost fi uh, 15 for flavor. That one was pretty good. It was the highest rated on my list. Um, then coming in second place, yeah, coming in second place was the Mixed Berry Mead. Um, in third place, the Pineapple Habanero, which if you have watched the um, tournament, hopefully you have, if you haven't, then go watch it because I'm giving you spoilers for what's happened. Um, the pineapple, pineapple habanero was the one that actually won. Um, I'm not gonna go through all of those, but you can see here, this is my uh, point values I gave. And um, I, I do wanna talk about a couple things. One, I wanna mention that yes, the pineapple habanero mead won, but it was not for everybody the highest uh, point. Like we didn't give it the most points. For me, I only gave it 60 out of 70. It was not my highest. Um, for Chris, he gave it 58. I mean, it was consistently high up there. And Tony, he gave it 53. He gave it the lowest of all. Um, so that, I thought that was really inter interesting. And we all, if you look at the guessing, we all figured out that that was it pretty quickly because um, habanero is a hard flavor to miss. Uh, let's talk about the runner up, which was the mixed berry mead. So um, Tony gave it a 63, which is pretty high up there. Um, Chris gave it a, let's see, make sure I'm saying the right one, 55, and I gave it a 61. So that one was up there. It was actually um, higher on the list, like of the top 10. I think it was really interesting um, because we, I know these meads, I thought I knew these meads really well, but I think when you're put in a blind taste test situation, you wind up um, maybe missing some. So I definitely missed a few meads, and um, you can see here, if you want to, to look at this list yourself, I'll put it down in the description in a Google Drive so you can pull it up and check it out and see like what we guessed. Some of them were consistent that I picked up. Um, I forgot to go on here. I meant to go on and say how many we each got right. Um, and I didn't do that, so that's my fault. But uh, I, I think I was pretty close. I, I got a couple of them mixed up. A couple of my traditionals, like I thought the, um, which one was it? The, uh, oh, like the Orange Blossom traditional and the, tr uh, the Clover traditional were flipped. Um, I think that happened with them as well. So if you want to check out this list and see kind of the point values of what, you know, what was given, um, for sure, go, go check that out. Um, but I thought it was just really interesting to see that 
maybe I was being really hard on my means, but like Tony, who is somebody who does a lot of stuff with wine. In fact, his day job is literally working with wine and, and helping people pick out good wines. Um, he was really kind, maybe kind, or maybe he really liked these things. Uh, cause he gave some high scores and of course some low scores. I do want to talk about that. The lowest score that each one of us gave, uh, um, let's see, I'll start with me. So I gave my lowest score was number mead number eight, which was the pear mead. I was just not a fan of it. It was really thin, really watery, like consistently across the board. You can see uh, it had a good, um, a decent nose, but everything else was just terrible about it. I gave it such a low score, 24. My second lowest was the clover traditional, which was like two and a half years old. Um, the first lowest for Chris was the pear mead as well. It's kind of interesting. He gave it a 29. Um, and the second lowest for him was the Joe's Ancient Orange, which I thought that was really good. I gave it a 57. It's interesting. But, um, and then the, finally the lowest lowest, which Tony really liked this one. And that was kind of funny during the actual tournament because he, he was going on about how he, he enjoyed it. And we were kind of like, I just didn't like it. He gave that pear meat a uh, 58 which was kind of funny to me. And the lowest for him was the cherry mead, uh, just the regular cherry mead, not the white chocolate cherry. The second lowest for him uh, was the peppermint mead. Yeah, he wasn't a fan of that one. Okay, now let's get to the part where you guys, I know you're, you're wanting to see this. This is the placement for everything. This is how everything mixed came out. Um, this is based off t uh, point totals, not specific uh, areas, not like flavor or anything like this. This is just point totals. So in first place, and all the points, was the mixed berry mead, the 179 points. Um, then white chocolate cherry was second place with 175. And third place, um, pineapple habanero, 171 out of 210. What's interesting to me, the top two at the end were the mixed berry and the pineapple, or pineapple habanero, but the pineapple actually won. It wasn't the highest, uh, well, no, if you're going strictly off the numbers, the ratings that we gave, you would think the mixed berry would have won because of that result. However, it wasn't. It was the um, it was pineapple habanero. Uh, a very close in fourth place was the apple pie boche with 170. The basic boche was also close, 168. Cherry mead in sixth place, 164. Then we had um, a couple ties, and I forgot to put a tie right here. This is a these two are a tie. This tenth place. Um, the in seventh place for a tie we had the apple cinnamon mead and i love this this is one thing i wanted to mention the uh peppermint mead which if you know anything about the 2018 tournament um those two are the last ones to be you know they were um, first place and second place and the apple cinnamon ended up winning over the peppermint mead so i think it's really funny that they tied in this and i can't say that i even rigged it at all because this is based off two other judges' opinions, and somehow our points, the points combined to be um, even, that's pretty wild to me. Um, then we have the Orange Blossom Traditional, which was ninth place. Uh, very close in, in 10th place with the tie, we have the uh, Chocolate and Vanilla Boche and the Mango Mead, both at 156. Then Joe's Ancient Orange, 150 in 12th place, Watermelon Mead, uh, 13th place, 149, really close. In 14th place, the Raspberry Boche, the, the Clover Traditional with 130, and then the final one that we all, except for Tony, um, didn't really like was the Pear Mead, and that was 16th place. So that's the end, uh, that's the total tabulation. Again, if you want to see this list, it's in the description. I'll make sure and include that. And uh, I'll probably go through and edit. I don't have it in my current state, but um, how many we all got right out of the 16, because uh, I think that'll be interesting. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed this. This was the secondary side of the tournament, and I'm not going in super deep with all of the numbers behind it because I think it could take a long time to do that. But um, there are so many other things I could have done here. I could have gone through and tabulated which one got the most flavor points, which one got the most finish points and those things, but I didn't want to dive that deep. To be quite honest with you, I've spent, um, I think now 10 hours editing the, the tournament alone. And then I've also spent about, you know, 
five hours preparing and then shooting this and tabulating these, it's just been so crazy. But I hope you've enjoyed this. This was the other competition that I had mentioned. And um, this one was almost just as fun to me because I got to uh, get some invaluable uh, information about my own mead making. And I think it's important that you guys, when you make your meads, you don't just listen to only your judgment, but you get some judgment of other people. Uh, I will also include um, this little mead score sheet. I'll of course take off my, the what mead is it, but uh, that way if you want to use this score sheet for your friends, um, you can go ahead and, and use that. And I would highly recommend to, to judge your meads based off that. Uh, I did not go off the BJCP guideline for mead making and judging. I know that that's kind of, that has its own list and I didn't want to dive into that with them because I just felt like it would have taken a whole lot longer. So uh, this has been a lot of fun. I'll do another one of these in the future. Don't know when, don't know what it will include, but I hope you guys will uh, tune in for that one. And make sure to go check out the tournament, share the tournament, because man, I've spent so many hours on this. It's been a lot of fun and I, I hope that it's been enjoyable. So thank you guys. Have a great day and cheers. Hey, this is Man Made Mead. I wanna share some behind the scenes footage from the Mead Tournament of 2020 with you, from setting it up to explaining some of the rules and just various things about it. So uh, also I, I wrote the music used in it. So I, I show you um, kind of how I wrote one of those songs, just some various stuff. I appreciate you guys taking the time. Go check out the tournament if you haven't um, seen it before. Uh, and yeah, enjoy this behind the scenes footage. All right, just to give you guys a little behind the scenes of how this me tournament is looking so far. This is the night before. I've got two microphones up at the top for recording voices. Of course, I have my camera and I'm gonna have another camera um, over in this corner, you can see right there. And then, believe it or not, this phone is going to be put on this, on this uh, in an interesting way, this ceiling fan as the uh, thing that picks up the board that does that. So that's kind of what this looks like right now. I just finished cleaning up all my glasses I'm gonna be using for tomorrow. And uh, I needed 48 glasses because there are 16 meads, three judges, and it's gonna be um, quite a bit of, uh, quite a, a lot of glassware. Luckily I have it because um, I had a friend give me a bunch of glassware, but this is what it looks like right now. And um, of course I'll give you some more behind the scenes soon. Okay, it's a really laborious task, but what I did was I put a label on every single one for all three judges. So you can see here, I printed these out so that um, as we're tasting them, we can remember what glass we have for one, uh, but it's just easier to keep hold of. The 48 glasses, I've got them all right here. Um, I tried to match the glasses to the best of my ability to, the, to be the same-ish. So like you see here, like these three are the same, which is good. But then we get a few of them that aren't, and I nothing. I mean, I don't have 48 of the same glasses. Like these, like this is two tiny ones, and then this big one. Um, and uh, are they for different alcohols? Yes, but what are you gonna do about it? I can't really do much. I don't have 48 of the same glasses. So tomorrow we'll fill them up and we'll do the tournament. All right, the second half of the mead tournament has started. So what we're doing here is we are all tasting each individual mead. Um, and this is not going towards the tournament. This is going towards a second kind of video. Um, you, based off this score sheet you see here, we are ranking every single mead, giving it different characteristics and points, totaling up to 70 points. And I will be giving you those results. So we're gonna go and taste them, and then we'll get to the actual mead tournament. Okay, so we just finished the result of the whole tournament. We did an after show, we did a bunch of stuff. You can see behind me, um, there's the whole board and everything, and of course, a ton of glassware that I need to clean now. But this was a really fun experience, and I hope that you guys have enjoyed getting to watch it and maybe see some behind the scenes. Um, if you wanna see the whole tournament, of course, it's on YouTube. There's an after show. There is a show talking about each mead and the specific, um, you know, points we gave it and why we gave them, blah, blah, blah. I'm doing some a video on that. So there's a bunch of different content about this tournament and I hope you'll go check it out. So thank you guys for watching it. Go check out that stuff and I'll have some more, hopefully some behind the scenes stuff in the future for various other projects that I have.
So thanks for watching. Cheers. Okay. Um, I'm going to try and record myself writing the same song. Here we go. Okay, I just finished up editing the entire thing. The after show, every one of the uh, of the tournament videos, so the quarterfinals, semifinals, finals, grand finals. Um, I'm finishing up now the behind the scenes for you guys. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, it's been kind of fun to do this side of things because I don't normally do a lot of behind the scenes, um, but since you guys are loyal patrons and I wanna make sure and, and honor that, uh, I'm gonna give this to you guys. Uh, I had a lot of fun not only making the tournament, but making like the songs. So I made both of the songs used in the intros and the introduction of the, each mead. So uh, that was one thing. Um, you saw one of the songs, but the other one I just didn't, I didn't show my recording process. So it's been a lot of editing. You can see here there is just tracks and tracks and tracks and so much going on. Um, but I've really had a lot of fun and hope you guys will... Leave your comments and let me know what you think of this. And uh, I want to know, did you guys guess on the right mead? Um, if you haven't seen the tournament, go check it out. Uh, it'll be out in June. So it'll be really fun. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.